Hey again everybody, Dr. Bolin here with our microbiology shorts. This is just a condensation of our uh, shorts that we go over in our larger videos uh, talking about microorganisms. Um, I just want to invite you to come watch our larger videos if you want a more in-depth explanation of the topic. Uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, below uh, or donate to my Patreon if you like these videos. So let's get started. Alright, so let's get into our story. Our story takes place in Egypt, which is the home of King Tut. Tut sounds like tetany, Clostridium tetany, which causes tetanus. Our worshipper here, who is worshipping King Tut, has adorned the statue with a talisman that is made out of nuts. Nuts are to remind you that Clostridium tetany is spore forming, like all members of the genus Clostridium. Nuts kind of look like spores. So a necklace made out of nuts, along with this G and G talisman. We're going to put a mask on old King Tut to remind you that Clostridium tetany, along with all the Clostridium species, is an obligate anaerobe. And notice the sandy uh, Egyptian desert. It's all full of sand, or we can call it dirt, to remind you that Clostridium tetany is found in dirt. Oh no, the pagan worship has unleashed a plague upon Egypt. And that plague is snakes. Snakes to remind you that Clostridium tetany is a gram-positive bacillus. Snakes are kind of elongated and, and oval-shaped. So just like gram-positive bacilli, Clostridium tetany is a gram-positive bacillus. The residents of Egypt are not pleased by all these snakes that have been unleashed in Egypt. And this woman sees a snake and she spazzes out. The tetany toxin has, uh, or tetanospasmin, has caused her to spaz out. Toxin of Clostridium tetany is called tetanospasmin and it causes spasms. And here comes an evil witch with an evil grin called Rhysa Sardonicus. And what does this do? Well, it sees the GABA and glycine on the snare protein, and the witch <laughs> snares <laughs> it out. She cleaves the snare protein. Tetanospasmin cleaves the snare protein and thus inhibits the release of GABA and glycine at the Renshaw inhibitory interneurons. GABA and glycine cannot make it to the alpha motor neurons, and the alpha motor neurons are now disinhibited, causing spasm and all of the symptoms that we see from tetanus. There it goes. It's been cleaved. Notice the pointy pyramids here in the background to rem remind you that tetanus infections are caused by dirty, sandy punctures. Dirty punctures can be from things like stepping on a rusty nail, which is classic, scraping your arm against some barbed wire or an old uh, dilapidated car that's been sitting in a junkyard, things like that. And then here we have our professor of Egyptology, the prophylactic professor, reminding you that uh, he's holding a syringe, reminding you that we can prevent tetanus with a component vaccine every 10 years. And also notice these antibody posts surrounding King Tut, which is to remind you that we can give immune globulin or antitoxin antibodies as post-exposure prophylaxis for tetanus. <laughs> 